come from deep within. I'm a speech, my style, my skin. I ain't no country. All about, let's, let's circle the wagons and find out what is my mime. Yeah. What, what, and, and I think I, I would like to challenge people. I, I, I took your challenge. I took it as a challenge. I went, <laughs> I went up to, to each of my kids and said, Hey, this is what a mime is. You know, gestures, oh you know, gestures <laughs> and movement that tell a story. So without my words, my, my life, what does it tell you? Wow. Well, and I, I, so I want to challenge everybody, go up to yeah. their spouse or go up to their children and say, what is my mime? What is my mime? I just challenge them. You may not like what you hear, but you know, you can do a gut check. <laughs> gut and, check. <laughs> and, and then you can make some changes to make sure. So this is a good time for us to find our mime during this pandemic. Hope you don't mind me saying that. No, no, no. That. Because uh, I had, uh, like I told you earlier, um, you're the sixth person that I've talked with. And, um, you know, that was one of the things that I had learned about my mime at the beginning of the pod, not podcast, but the pandemic was, I was a, uh, just a shut in, you know, all I would do, uh, was just work and, uh, go home, work on music, maybe do some shows, go home. Um, and it, when I was going out there and doing, uh, you know, social type activities with friends or whatnot, you know, you know, I, I was, I wasn't really giving of myself and, uh, I really was a hermit in my mind and personality and stuff like that. And it was, so basically the pandemic showed me that I was a, I was a hermit. I, uh, because wh one of the things I noticed was that when we started getting into like May and June, mm -hmm. uh, everybody was getting into their groups. It was, uh, I'd see like my friends on, you know, uh, the social media outlets, they were out doing things with their friends and family and stuff like that. And I wasn't getting any calls and, you know, and the Lord was like, Hey, um, why is this? And it's like, I don't know. They just don't want to hang out with me. It's like, no, you, you're, you haven't presented, mm -hmm. you haven't given that type of a signal to them that you are their friend, that you're in it with them. It's not wow. that they're with you. Mm -hmm. We're in this, you know, so that whenever this pandemic comes, when hellfire comes, they don't, you're not the first one on their mind as in, I'm in this with you. Mm. So uh, that, uh, that, that's interesting, you know, that we're talking about this now because, um, and that was, that was my mind for a very long time, most of my life, I would say, that the react, uh, relationships and interactions that I did have with people was surface level. Some of it might have been, Somewhat, but it wasn't to the point of when something goes down that, you know, I know Zine's got my back. Let me call him. Let me, you know, contact with him. I was like, nobody called. Nobody, you know, they're checking. How are you doing? Okay. And that was it. So since then, my mind has been uh, to connect with people mm -hmm. um, uh, and focus on. Um, paying attention to what's going on in other people's lives. Uh, what are their interests? What are their things that they're doing? Choosing in conversations to delve in deeper than just something surface. Um, and of course, you know, it's, it's, it's all about, of course, give and take. And if I see that they don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, okay, well, so I try that with everyone. I just like, hey, are they interested in being a friend? Something closer than something at the surface. Because I'm like, dude, I can't survive life by myself being that Lone Ranger. You know, uh, even even this could be seen out in the type of movies or, you know, things that I would games that I would play on a PlayStation or whatever. And it would be like the Lone Ranger. I'm always trying to do things myself, trying to, you know, save the world by myself or survive a situation by myself. And um, man, that's that's what I'm trying to counteract now. Uh, and I think it's, um, you know, a, a great thing for me to think about, um, like what you were saying, remembering who you are and whose you are, mm -hmm. and remembering that the kingdom of heaven isn't just me. <laughs> mm -hmm. So why am I acting like it? So, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's really, really, really cool. Um, 
what you're what you're doing now. Um, there was something I want to ask you. Uh, what inspired the bow tie? <laughs> I know we're just tie. jumping, <laughs> but no, great question, Ma. Yeah, um, my my wife is is a very compassionate person, and and she I've been blessed. She sees things that I don't see. Um, like hey, Steve, you know, like one of you know our daughters said something, you know, like let's go see the stars. You went out and said cool and came back. She really didn't want to see the stars she wanted to see. She wanted time with, you know, like I miss that. And so she's really good at at finding creative ways to connect with with people. Mm. And so as a man, I'm task oriented. She's people oriented. So sometimes she can pull me back and say, Whoa, you're missing you're missing something. So oh, wow. she's a therapist. And so we both, you know, are, are out seeing people. Um and, and she said, "Steve, what you're doing is sad. You're, you're you're seeing people moments before they pass away. You're you're seeing people that grieve. And let's find out. You know, I wonder if you can do something creative. You know, something to to bring a smile on their face. Something unique. And and just out of a joke, I said, "Hey, Patch Adams wore a red nose. You know that movie with Robin Williams. <laughs> he wore a red nose, and people do a double take on what's that. You know. Yeah. So I kept thinking, I don't want to wear a red nose or do something you know over the top." But then I, you know, I'm, I'm from Atlanta and before that Orlando and Miami. So I'm like a big city guy in a small town. And, and, uh, I, I just, remember, I just remember, I don't remember if she said it or me. I think she said, Hey, you wore a bow tie. People don't wear bow ties around here. That may get their attention. So, so we decided to, to, to buy a whole bunch of bow ties that would get people's attention. Some of them are pretty silly, you know, like oh, some wow. have pumpkins on it, like right before, you know, um, Halloween or some had, you know, candy canes on it. And, um, so just different things to get their attention. So, um, so one of them says, Hey, bow tie man, you know, so <laughs> I decided I want to do something, you know, that, you know, something different, you know, yeah. it's just like a colorful, you know, you know how people do mit, you know, the socks that don't yeah, match, I do that. kind of no. stand yeah, out. Yeah. I yeah so <laughs> I took it. it, I took it one extra level and did a bow tie. Okay. Because when people see a bow tie here in Lawrence County or Giles County or Hohenwall or Henryville, they're like, what, what's that? What what's are you doing? This? <laughs> you know, what's like, going are, on? are you leaving here going to a ball? You know, like oh what's going on? Goodness. So, so I like it. I like it because it, it it's really intense and you want to, you want to somehow in there bring mm-hmm. about a smile or, or a conversation that's kind of, you know, like, what are you doing? What, what do you wear that bow tie for? You know? So that's, wow. that's why we're the bow tie I just started it. Um, I don't know, maybe six, four, five, six months ago. Hmm. Something unique that stands out. That's cool. So. Yeah, I I used to uh, do the. I think I told you, I used to do the bow tie uh, for my giddy up for music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I would um, I would have that, and I didn't do the suspenders, and that's the um, uh, also the uh, um, what do you call that? Like a seal. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's it's one of the things I have for my um music thing too so um yeah man that's really cool um is there anything else you wanted to kind of kind of uh talk about with uh with with, what your mom is or yeah i'd actually like to share an illustration okay um for every you know people who are listening going hey that happened to me you know how do i find my identity what what are you talking about elaborate on it please you know so i'd like to Share an illustration. It's also a, a true story. It's a biblical story. Um, and before I share the chapter, the name of the the person, um, there was this lady who was who was pregnant, and she started to have some labor pain. So she went to God about it, and God revealed, "You're you're going to have twins, and the one that comes out second is really going to be first, and he's going to be the ruler of a nation." Hmm. Think about that identity. And, wow. and and that also and this, this shows that our identity does not come from what your parents said about you or what they didn't say about you or which you wish they had said about you the approval that you received or didn't receive mm. your identity his identity came before he was born to earn it and he said this man is going to be um, the ruler of a of a mighty nation the father of a mighty nation so wow. just think about that. So where do you go to find your identity? You need to go to the one who created you before time existed. 
So, but the thing was, you know, generational curses, you know, Mm -hmm. usually if, if parents struggle with something that's passed down just through learned behavior, right? So this, the mother had the children, but she gave him a name that, that means deceiver. Ooh. The name fell short of the identity God gave him. So the parents gave a lesser identity. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And the name was Jacob. Jacob and Esau, you know, the story of Jacob and Esau, the mother was a deceiver because Laban was a deceiver. Mm-hmm. Remember when, when, the, when the father, um, you know, he came from a line of deceivers. And so she taught him how to lie and deceive. So just like that generational curse is passed on. Right. Mm. And so when it came to when Esau was about to starve to death, he just said, Hey, I'll do anything. Feed me. I'm about to die. And he said, give me your, your birthright. You know, and, and the, he's like, I don't care. Take it anyway. So he, he was deceptive. He took advantage of a situation. And then mm. all of a sudden when the father was going to pass away, and at that time it's very serious where the father yep. lays his hand on him and gives him a blessing. And uh, and so he was going to give him his inheritance. Um, and so the son went off to go kill the, the father's favorite meal and bring it back. The mom said, let's lie to your father. So do you see where the, the mother raised him to be a deceiver, to wow. be a liar? Um, and his own name met the deceiver. Mm. So he went and deceived his father. The brother found out about it, chased him out of town. He was in the middle of a wilderness. And think about this family now. The father realized, the husband realized the wife did that. So now you're going to have a husband and wife, you have marriage problems, right? Now the son found out the mom favors this other son. So what kind of relationship problems is that going to cause Ooh. so now you have a completely dysfunctional family he left and he realized you know all that deceiving i did resulted in nothing because i don't have the birthright i don't mm. have the inheritance i don't have the blessing and it said he laid his head on a rock and he was crying himself to sleep and said i lost everything wow. lying and deceiving i tried to gate everything and now i lost my mom i lost my dad i lost my brother i lost my everything wow. now he's penniless has nothing and what's what's amazing is god showed up to him in the wilderness right after he messed up everything mm. and guess what god said to him you deserve this no <laughs> no you know you had that coming you know what i had plans for you but you sure didn't mess that one up no cuz god is not human and he does not see us for how we see ourselves. He doesn't see us for who we are now. He sees us for who he has predestined us to be. Wow. He sees me as the finished product. If I live to be 70 or 120, he sees me as the finished product, purified, whole, and sanctified. Wow. I only see myself for the mistakes I made now. So God showed up to Jacob in his worst moment, uh, in the middle of his brokenness, and guess what he said? Hey, you're going to be the father of a mighty nation. You see how his plan (laughs) did not change. He did not earn that, and he could not mess that up. And that's amazing. It is. To know. And Jacob was probably like, I don't know, you know, like whatever, you know, like I don't understand that. But (laughs) it's interesting that God, he ran to his father-in-law, and his father-in-law, guess what, was a deceiver because he taught his mom to deceive. And he deceived him because he said, hey, I want to marry Rebecca and he said work for me for seven years, but he gave the wrong daughter and then mm-hmm. and so so God put him under a deceiver and allowed him to get a taste of his own medicine wow. and that's called the work of sanctification. He'll put you in tough situations to 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 reveal your own ugliness. You know the the the, the fallenness of man, Steve. This is what's in your heart. Mm. This is your generational curse. Let's break this thing. You know what I mean? Wow. Your your inheritance is not contingent upon it. You know, the calling I have on your life is not contingent upon you fixing this, but man, you'd be so much happier if you quit <laughs> kicking against the gorge, you know, like you told Paul, quit yeah. kicking against me. I've got a plan for you. I want you to go this way. You're going that way. And that's why you're feeling some kicks. Wow. Work with me. And so he did. He lined himself up and it said he ended up wrestling with God, you know, Christ met with him. The pre-incarnate Christ met with Jacob, and he wrestled with him. And he said, now your name is Israel. Wow. You know? And he changed his name that he received from a generational curse 
um, a lesser name, and he gave him his true identity mm. and said, now live out of that. You Israel. know? And in, yeah, and in, in, <laughs> and in Revelation, it says that when we get to heaven, the Lord will give us, uh, um, he said he's going to give us a ruby. This thing goes in our crown, and it says on that jewel will be a name that nobody knows except for you and your maker. Mm. And that's how he always saw you. Wow. And so I want to challenge people who are listening to this. You may have been, been like Jacob and messed everything up. Your family has disowned you. You made every mistake that you can make. Man. And God says, I already knew you and I already determined who you were going to be before the beginning of time. Had nothing to do with you earning it. So when you're finally humble enough, and sadly because we're human, it takes brokenness for us to go to God to say, okay, let's do it your way. Who am I? Mm. And you'll say it never changed. Wow. So I just want to leave with this. Mm. God sees us for who we're going to be, not for who we think we are right now. We're not defined by our sins. We're not defined by our mistakes. He says, I will use all things for the benefit of those who have faith in me, wow. meaning my own mistakes, my own sin. So it's not too late. Um, if, if you're 90 years old, you're listening, you have six months to live, <laughs> or you're nine years old and you're in an orphanage because your parents did or didn't do right in your eyes. You know, you can find your identity by getting in that scripture and saying, who am I? And asking, who am I? And who are you? <laughs> and just asking those questions. So I just wanted... Um, to be true to my calling and, and share that illustration. It's a true story, but that, that story is found in, in, in the Bible in the book of Genesis. So I'd encourage everybody to, to look that up and, and ask and go to God and ask those, those questions. Wow. That, that definitely is an eye opening, uh, thought provoking, uh, conversation that we've just had. Um, man, uh, <laughs> there was a few things that written down, you know, and, just kind of looking over them and um man i appreciate you coming on the show and uh listening and, or not listening but man it's got me thinking man it really does <laughs> well, but, well same wow. thing your your wow. your show just yeah. the name of your show yeah. and and the question you said you're going to pose me made me <laughs> stop and go huh <laughs> like man huh. it's got me thinking you know like dude maybe i need to think a little bit more about what my mind is. Um, and, uh, you know, I know that I'm acting it out, my mind, but thinking about it and meditating on it, uh, you know, where God has me in, in the grand scheme of things, what, you know, am I doing? And am I doing what God wants me to do? Mm -hmm. I, I have no doubts about I'm doing what God wants me to do, but it's, it's uh, just sitting down and thinking about it you know, um, fine tuning it. Yeah. Uh, and sticking to the course, uh, no matter what happens. So yeah. Um, thanks again, man, for coming. And, uh, I guess we'll head on out. <laughs> thanks, well, I appreciate Steve. You having me very man, much. this really got me thinking, but, uh, yeah, uh, I'd love to, you know, be on the show with you again sometime and maybe talk about some other things love to come back um it'd be cool so uh until next time man all right god bless you goodbye everybody you meet a story